Hi everyone, my name is Marinko Spasiewicz and in this video I will show you how to create a more secure authentication flow in your web API apps using two-factor authentication with ASP.NET Core Identity. For those of you not aware of what two-factor authentication is, it is a process where a user after entering valid credentials needs to enter an additional OTP or one-time password received via email or SMS for the authentication to be successful. This improves the authentication flow a lot and makes it even more secure. So let's see how we can do this. I will use the project created in one of my previous videos from this identity series. And here I already have the registration and the authentication logic implemented. If you haven't watched my previous videos from this series, I strongly recommend you do so. All the videos are part of the identity playlist on my channel. Now, before I move on with the implementation, I have to modify one thing in the database. In my ASP.NET users table, I have to enable the two-factor enabled column. The email confirmed column was already set to true in my previous video. But if you want to do it in the code, you can modify the register action by using the user manager dot set two-factor enabled async method. Here, I have to pass the user for the first argument and then the boolean argument to set the two-factor enabled column to true or false. If you by default want to enable this feature, you can always set this to true. Of course, if you want your user to decide on this, you should provide another property for the user for registration DTO object and just use that boolean property here. Ok, that's all for the initial preparation and I can move on. Just quickly, I would like to let you know about our ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book that you can use to master all the best practices to create powerful production-ready web APIs. Also, check out our Blazor course to create client C-sharp apps without using JavaScript. The links are in the description below. Now, let's continue. To start with the two-factor authentication process, I have to modify the authentication action. So, after I verify the user and the password, I can create another condition and await the user manager's get two factor enabled async method where I need to provide the user object as an argument. This method returns a boolean value indicating whether the user has two factor authentication enabled. If they do, I will return a result of my new method named generate OTP for two factor and pass the user argument. Since I will have a bit of logic for this flow, I decided to move it to another method to make this action as clean as possible. So, let's generate this new method. But just before I implement this method, I want to modify my auth response DTO and add two more properties here. I need a boolean property first, named is two factor required and also a string property named provider. I always use these two properties in my authentication response to the client because on the client app, I have to decide about the authentication flow as well. And if two-factor is required, I will redirect the user on the two-factor page to enter the code and I will pass the provider to that page as a query string parameter. Now, I can return to my controller. So, Let's remove this line and the first thing I need to do is to extract the list of two-factor providers for this specific user. And for that, I will call the getValidTwoFactorProviderAsync method and pass the user as an argument. Once I have the list populated, I can check if the list doesn't contain the email provider. If that's the case, I will return an unauthorized result, use a new auth response DTO object, and populate the error message property with the invalid two factor provider message. On the other hand, since now I am sure an email provider is registered for this user, which I did in the password reset video from this series, I can generate a new token. And for that, I will await the user manager dot generate two factor token async method and here 
I need to pass the user and the name of the token provider. Then, as usual, I will create a new message and use my custom message class where I have to pass the user's email, then the title of the email message. Next, I need the token. And finally, I will use null for the attachment. This is, of course, the message from my custom email service that I introduced in the previously mentioned password reset video. Now, let's use the email service and call the send email async method with the message as an argument. Finally, I will return the OK result. And here, I will again use the auth response DTO class and set the is two factor required property to true and the provider property to email. So that's it. I'm done with the implementation here. And let's test what we have for now. I will send the authenticate request now. And as you can see from the result, I don't have the JSON web token anymore here. You can see the authentication is not successful yet. And the two factor is required. So this looks great. And let's check our email. Excellent. You can see the token here. Now, we can assume that the user will copy this code and paste it on the client apps page dedicated for this purpose. This page will send a request to our API to verify the token and the provider. So let's implement that. First, I want to create a new DTO class for my two-factor flow. And let's name the file two-factor DTO. Then I need three properties here. The string email as the first one, the string provider as the second one. And finally, the string token. Also, I want to make them all required. So I will simply use the required attribute here and paste it over the other two properties. Now I can get back to the controller and implement a new action. I need a new post action here with the URI addition. And then let's create a new public async task I action result action named two factor. And this action will accept a two factor DTO body parameter. Now, the first thing I will do inside this method is check if the model state is valid. If the model state is invalid, I will return a bad request response immediately, which indicates that the client sent invalid data. Next, I will try to find the user by their email using the user manager dot find by email async method, where I have to provide the user's email. If the user is not found, I will return another bad request response with the invalid request message. Now, I can move on to verify the two-factor token. For that, I will use user manager dot verify two-factor token async method to check if the provided token is valid. Of course, I have to pass the user as the first argument, the token provider as the second one, and the token itself. Here, I'm not checking if this verification action is successful or not, because if it is not, it will throw a not supported exception telling us that the provider we sent is not registered in our app. But if you want to handle that, you can use either a global exception handler or simply wrap this statement inside the try catch block. So if the token is valid, I can simply copy these three lines from the authenticate action and paste them here. This is the same process we would do in the authentication action if the user didn't have a two-factor enabled. Great. Now let's test the entire flow. Let me send the login request again. And again, I get the two-factor required response. Also, I can check my email and copy the code from here. Good. With the token acquired, I can get back to Postman and use another request 
where I already have the email and the provider prepared. And let's just paste the OTP here. Okay, let's send this one. And now we can see the authentication is successful and we have the JSON web token generated. So you see how easily we can improve the authentication logic in our web API application with a few simple additions to the existing code. And if you like the video, please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. It helps the channel a lot and supports me as well. Also, you can hit that bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.